now we have the clear understanding of the basics of mesh analysis and in this lecture we are going to solve problem number two and in this problem the given network is having one dependent voltage source and we are required to find the value of current i using the mesh analysis and when you look at the given network you will find current i is the current flowing in this branch and we have two sources this source is the independent voltage source providing 5 volts and this source is the dependent voltage source providing the voltage equal to 2 times i now i is the current flowing in this branch this current here and therefore we can say that this dependent source is the current controlled voltage source now let us quickly perform all the steps required to obtain current i we know in mesh analysis the step number one is to identify the total number of meshes present in the network and here we are having one two and three meshes so number of mesh is equal to 3 and in step number 2 we assign the current to all the meshes we have 3 meshes so we will assign 3 currents to our 3 meshes I1 is the current flowing in mesh number 1 I2 is the current flowing in mesh number 2 I3 is the current flowing in mesh number 3 now you have two options first option is to provide the direction to all the three currents in clockwise direction or you can provide the direction as anti-clockwise but I have already explained why it is good to have a clockwise direction so we will provide clockwise direction to all the three currents so we are done with step number two now we will move on to the step number three in which we will develop the mesh equations or the kvl equations and we develop the mesh equations for all the meshes separately therefore we will first develop the mesh equation for mesh number one and we will have plus five plus five then we have minus i1 multiplied to one this will give us minus i1 after this we have minus i1 minus i2 multiplied to one so minus i1 minus i2 multiplied to one which is equal to this then we will move back to the same point therefore we will equate with zero now when you simplify this you will have two times i1 minus i2 equal to 5 and let us call this equation number 1 now we will obtain the mesh equation for mesh number 2 and in mesh number 2 the mesh current is i2 and we will start from this point so we have minus i2 multiplied to 1 this means minus i2 then we have minus i2 minus i3 multiplied to 1 so we have minus i2 minus i3 multiplied to 1 which is equal to this then we have this dependent source and i have already told you we handle the dependent sources exactly same as we handle the independent sources except in case of superposition theorem thevenin's theorem and norton theorem and here we are not having any of these three cases therefore we will handle it exactly as we handled this source so we have minus two times i minus 2 times i and then we move in this direction and we have this resistor therefore we have minus i2 minus i1 multiplied to 1 so we will write it as it is and then we move back to the same point so we will equate with 0 now when you simplify this you will have 
i1 minus 3 times i2 plus i3 minus 2 times small i equal to 0. Let's call it equation number 2. Now we will follow the same process and have the mesh equation for mesh number 3. We will start from this point. We have minus i3 multiplied to 1. So we will write minus i3. Then we have this dependent source. And here you can see that there is rise in potential. Therefore, we will write plus 2 times i. Then we encounter this resistor and hence we have I3 minus I2 multiplied to 1. I3 minus I2 multiplied to 1. And then finally we move back to the same point. So equal to 0. Now you simplify this and you will have I2 minus 2 times I3 plus 2 times I equal to 0. Let's call this equation number 3. So these are our mesh equations and if you focus on this branch you will see one very important thing that current small i is moving like this and current i1 is also moving in the same direction but current i2 is moving in the opposite direction. Now forget about current i just focus on i1 and i2 and when you subtract i2 from i1 and you get some positive result this means i1 is greater than i2 and the direction of the resultant current will be in the same direction of i1 and this is what we are getting this small i is in the same direction of i1 this means small i is equal to i1 minus i2 and let's call this equation number 4. Now we have 4 equations and our task is to find out current i3. Why only current i3? Because we need i. This is what question is asking and this i is equal to i3. We can have the values of i1 and i2 as well but in this particular question only the value of i3 is required. So let's use our brain and try to have the value of current i3. We have four equations and the first thing we will do is to put i equal to i1 minus i2 in equation number 2. So I will change the color of my pen and here we will put i equal to i1 minus i2 in equation number 2 and this will give us i1 minus 3 times i2 keep looking this equation plus i 3 minus 2 times in place of i we will write i1 minus i2 i1 minus i2 equal to 0 now when you simplify this you are going to get minus i1 minus i2 plus i3 equal to 0 let us call this equation number 5. Now we will put i equal to i1 minus i2 in equation number 3. So let's put i in equation number 3. This will give us i2 minus 2 times i3 plus 2 times i1 minus i2 equal to 0. Now when you simplify this you will have 2 times i1 minus i2 minus 2 times i3 equal to 0. Let's call it equation number 6. And after obtaining all the mesh equations, the process to obtain the solution that is values of different currents we are having is our step number 4. So from here we are into step number 4 and we have obtained equation number 5 and equation number 6. Now when you compare equation number one and equation number six you will find this part is same so what we will do we will subtract equation number six from equation number one so let's subtract equation number six 
from 1 and this will give us 2 times i3 equal to 5 and from here we are getting current i3 equal to 5 over 2 amperes or we can write i3 is equal to 2.5 amperes and i3 is nothing but current i so this implies the unknown current which we were required to calculate is equal to 2.5 amperes and this is our answer